thing has to be for you. Other men might shoot at it and miss it. But God said, it may be as narrow as a half, but I can hit it. You ought to tell somebody, I don't know what you need, but God's got all the specification. And when your miracle come, God won't miss it. the quiz. Ehud was left-handed, but he was precise. Strapped on his dagger, and the king Eglon, big old fat fella, waiting for everybody to pay tribute. Ehud said, I'll go and take the tribute present. He went down to the palace. Old fat king Eglon sitting out in a cool house. Huh. I wish to see King Eglon. King, one of these Israelites out here, what's your name? Ehud. Fell out here named Ehud looking for you. He came to bring the tribute for Israel. Well, let him in. Ehud walks in. Uh, my Lord, King Eglon, uh, I've got a special present for you, but I also got some private business. I know you trust all these fellas, but I got some private business. Uh, all right, y'all, get out of here. Let, let me talk to, what's your name? Ehud. Let me talk to Ehud. When all the men went out, Ehud got close to the king, took his left hand and reached over on his right side, pulled out his dagger, and thrust it into all that fat. And the Bible said that the dirt came out of the hole. Didn't say nothing about blood. Dirt came out of his side. And the fat closed around. Even to uh, the extent that the handle of the knife got buried inside. And Eglon fell over and died. Everybody's gone. Nobody's in there but Ehud and dead King Eglon. <laughs> He didn't do nothing but walk on out by him as though nothing had happened. And they kept waiting for the king to summon them in. And finally by the time the, they thought it was, the king should have summoned them in and nobody came, they decided they'd better go and check on the king. Found he was there dead. Why? Because God's left-handed man. <laughs> Woo! You up here talking about, you, you know, God can't use me. Uh, I got an impediment of speech. That was Moses' excuse. Ehud, he can't use me. I'm left-handed. God said, you just joined my left-handed army. I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter who you are, what your handicap is. Give yourself to Jesus. He can use you. Sham God didn't serve long enough to even get a track record. We don't even know what was going on when Sham God. All we know is that it was some Philistines, 600 of them. Sham God was an old man. Hallelujah. Reverend Richard White preached on him not too long ago. Old man in the field with a stick in his hand. Folks, I'm like, that old man can't do nothing with that stick. Woo wee. But I want you to know you may not have nothing but a stick. But if God anoints that stick, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The enemy better get out of the way of your stick. If God, yeah, 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 yeah. hallelujah, that's what he did for Moses. God called Moses on the backside of the desert. Moses had been a prince in Egypt. Pharaoh had sent him out without anything. Went out there with nothing but a shepherd's stick. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. And God called him on the backside of the desert. Moses, draw not nigh hither. You're getting too close to the bush. Pull the shoes off your feet. You're standing on holy ground. He'd already given up the scepter in Egypt. He'd already given up his crown. He'd already given up his royal robe. Now God said, now I want you to get rid of your shoes. 
Moses pulled off his shoes and went walking barefooted. God said, wait, you still got something. Lord, I don't have nothing. You got a stick in your hand. Throw it down. When he threw it down, it turned to a serpent. God said, pick it up. When he picked it back up, it became the rod of God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Tell somebody you may not have nothing but a stick, but dedicate it to God. And it'll become a mighty weapon in his hand. Woo Somebody need to be delivered today. I'm going to leave it right there. Three judges in chapter 3. Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar. They didn't have much, but when they got in trouble, Spirit of the Lord came on them. And I want you to know, I don't know what you're going through. Your enemy may not be the Philistine. Your enemy may not be the Moabites. Mm-hmm. Your enemy may not be the kingdom of Mesopotamia. But all I want you to know, whatever your enemy is, let the Spirit of God come on you. Somebody said, Preacher, I'm saved, and I know I'm saved. But there's a habit that keeps trying to come back. Let the Spirit of the Lord come on you and that habit will be destroyed forevermore. Don't you remember when Paul was on a certain coast and a viper latched on to his hand? What did Paul do but shake it off in the fire? I'm trying to tell you that the snakes, the vipers, the scorpions, the devil's habits, all of the devil's imps may be trying to latch on to you. But I got news for you. Whatever it is, you can shake it off in the fire. Let the Holy Ghost come on you. Shake it off in the fire. Shake up your habits. Shake off your diseases. Shake off your oppression. The flames of the Holy Ghost are burning bright. Flames are leaping to the very top of this building. Whatever you need, shake it off in the fire. God is your deliverer. God is your way out of no way. God is your help in the time of trouble. I dare you to praise him and shake it off in the fire. gonna leave it right there but I dare you to praise him for a minute when these judges got in trouble the Bible said what happened the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon them don't you want the Spirit of the Lord to come on you well I dare you to start praising him if you praise him the Spirit will come down when the praises go up The glory comes down. The blessings come down. The anointing comes down. Ah! Hallelujah! 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 You know, I'm trying to quit. But you know, I read in the Bible one day, in the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, how that when Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, there was a man sitting there at the gate called Beautiful. The man couldn't walk. He hadn't been able to walk. But when Peter looked at him, told the man, look on us. Look at me and my buddy John. We don't have no money. Silver and gold have I none, but I got something for you, such as I have, give I unto thee, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He extended his right hand and lifted him up, and the Bible said immediately when the man leaped up, 
he received strength in his legs and in his ankle bones. And the man that they'd been leaving outside the temple, when he got delivered, they saw him in the temple. They said he wasn't doing but three things. He was walking, he was leaping, and he was praising God. I dare you to just turn to your right and take about three steps and then leap for the Lord and shout glory to God. Ah! Hallelujah! 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 Wait! Turn around! Take another three steps to the left. Walk! Leap! Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I want every sinner in this building. You're lost in your sins and you know it. But you want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to get up. Come down the nearest aisle. Come here right now. Hallelujah. God will save you. If you're in the balcony, get up. Go to the elevator. Push one. Come on down here now. Lost in your sins and you want to be saved, get up. Step down the nearest aisle. Hallelujah. Backslider that have known the Lord and you strayed away. Come on back to Jesus today. 
Hallelujah. Woo, thank you. Son of man, son of woman, come. The Lord is calling you. Backslide of the Lord is calling you. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I'm waiting on you. Heaven is waiting on you. Come on. Come on. The Lord is calling you. Somebody else that needs to be saved. Backslider, come on. God's been good to you. He could have cut you down while you're out there in your sins. He could have cut you down before you had an opportunity to come back to Jesus. Hallelujah. But God's been good to you. Why don't you come home to Jesus now? God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. in the balcony. In the balcony, go to the elevator, push one, come on down. The Lord is calling you. If you want to be saved, come on. Backslider, come on. Come on now. Mmm. <laughs> hey, thank you. God, break these shackles here. God, break the shackles. And men and women might hear your voice. Why don't you obey God today? also ask those of you that's already saved and you know you're saved but you also know you're not in the church where God wants you to be the door of the church is open this is your opportunity to come and be a part of this fellowship here at Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ come on the Lord is speaking to you if you're in the balcony, go to the elevator, push one, come on down. If you want to be saved, come. Backslider, come. Want to make this your church home, come. Come down. Come down. The blessings. Come down. I'm waiting on three more people. God bless you, young lady. I'm waiting on two more. You know who you are. Woo! Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him.
Bishop of the Thunder. with each one of you and you're going to follow the worship coordinators god bless you my sister god bless you god bless you don't you all just all right beautiful just follow them right on ha <laughs> god bless your heart follow them god bless you hallelujah glory to jesus god bless you hallelujah Somebody ought to say hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Glory. Do you feel his presence today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Getting ready to let you go. Deacons, as we are still doing all that we can to keep the nationwide television ministry on, I'm not going to uh, necessarily.